Welcome to another episode of Behind the Scenes of the Waltons. Today, I'm going to be talking about the episode, The Best Christmas. If you're enjoying these, please do like and subscribe. Of course, Christmas is where it all started for us with the homecoming, that made-for-TV Christmas movie that launched it all back in 1971. Seems like a long time ago <laughs> because it was. I look back on some of those early episodes in The Homecoming, and it's hard to believe I was ever that young. But weren't we all? Uh, I'm always so excited when I hear that new generations are discovering the Waltons and passing it on to their families. That, that's very heartwarming to me that the legacy continues. So if you have not seen The Homecoming, it's the holidays. I recommend giving it a look. It's a beautiful movie. Uh, Patricia Neal starred as Olivia Walton instead of Michael Learned. Andrew Duggan was our father instead of Ralph Waite. And Edgar Bergen was our grandpa instead of Will Gear. But despite those changes, it's lovely and you should see it. <laughs> That's my pitch for the homecoming. And for those of you who watch it every holiday season, thank you. I know I do. We sit down and that is part of our Christmas tradition as well. So in the episode, The Best Christmas, our mama is recognizing that things are changing. And this may be one of the last Christmases where we can gather the whole family before things do change. She can tell John Boy has foreign places in his eyes. You know, he wants to get out into the world and start exploring and spreading his wings. So she sees that. Mary Ellen is already married and is already dealing with that conflict of Kurt's family versus her family and who are they going to spend which holiday with. So those are all things that touch all of us as families as our kids grow up and get married and we have to share them with their girlfriend, boyfriend, you know, Spouse's family as well. So gathering a whole family together can always be challenging at the holidays. So that's kind of the core theme of this particular Christmas episode. This episode was written by John McGreevy, who wrote some of our best episodes and was nominated for Emmys, won Emmys. He's just a beautiful writer. And directed by Larry Dobkin. Uh, who was one of um, my favorite directors on The Waltons. He directed a number of episodes. Some of the things that stood out to me when I watched this episode again were the snow. We don't have snow in Southern California, so I knew that we were dealing with fake snow. Anytime I'm outside the house where you see what looks like snow, it wasn't real. Now, they do have a snowball fight, so they must have you know, brought in some sort of, or were creating crushed ice to create those snowballs because in order for those to stick together and look like real snowballs, that would have been real packed ice or snow or something. But what's on the ground and all of that, that's not real. It was some form of fake snow. Um, at one point, someone comes in the house and you see snow blow in with them. That would have been some sort of machine blowing some form of fake snow into the house to give that illusion. And I must say it's very effective. I found myself watching it. And if I hadn't known it was fake, I would have went, wow, look at all that snow there. <laughs> and I don't remember. They used a number of different types of fake snow. Sometimes it was soap bubbles. Those never looked real. Sometimes it was kind of a plastic of some sort. So... Uh, it didn't really melt when it landed on you. So I'm not sure which one, which version of it this was. In this episode, Grandma and Grandpa go to visit Maud Gormley. Marie Earle, who played Maud Gormley, was such a character. I get asked about her a lot. She was just, she was just a trip. You know, she, she sometimes struggled to remember her dialogue. And she had this lovely, endearing quality that she tended to close her eyes when she spoke. So if you watch her when she's talking, she's usually got her eyes closed. Another one of her sweet little habits was that to remember her lines, she often also said the other people's lines, not out loud, but her lips would move 
and she would be mouthing the other people's dialogue. Uh, so sometimes in the edit, they would have to <laughs> cut away from her when someone else was talking so that you didn't see her lips moving. And in some of these cases, obviously, she managed to not do that. So you actually saw her when someone else was talking. <laughs> she was full of life and energy and and had a real sense of humor. And so quite quite the character in real life as well. I loved the storyline of Ben going to deliver the present to Yancey. And, and I mean, everybody got stuck someplace uh, on this this uh, Christmas Eve and wasn't able to get there for, for the Christmas Eve dinner. But uh, Ben ends up at Yancey's house and Yancey with all of his animals inside his little one room house there. And uh, Eric, Ben had a lot of fun storylines with, with Yancey Tucker and, and Bob Donner, who played Yancey was, he wasn't like Yancey. Uh, but he did such a brilliant job of creating that character. Uh, and I just, I just love all the animals in, in his house there. <laughs> Quite a way to live, but it makes some sense that if he didn't have some place warm for the animals to be outside, then he had to bring them in. <laughs> I don't know that I would want to live in a house where I shared exactly the same space with so many animals, but Yancey didn't think twice about it. Then there's that point when Miss Fanny's car goes into the pond and they had it on um, like a platform. They had some sort of scaffolding or, or something in there to put the car in on that angle. And I expect they warmed that water so that um, with the actors having to be in it for some period of time that it wasn't quite as cold as it would have been naturally. Uh, the what looked like ice floating in the lake, those would have been, you know, fake ice flows. So another case of just special effects. Another example here of times when there were a lot of ad libs. Surprise! Surprise! You've been into the presents already. Come on. You're over. in it too far, Elizabeth. <laughs> we didn't get to open our presents. So they did happen at certain points in shows where it wasn't really scripted, but there was just supposed to be a regular group reaction to something. And that would be up to us to decide what our character might say at that point. This episode has such a beautiful message of the spirit of the holidays of love and family and caring and community and helping uh, where each of the family members who isn't able to be there in time for you know Christmas Eve dinner is because they are helping someone else in need. That John Boy and Mary Ellen and Kurt and Harley and Verdi are all there to help Miss Fanny and her, you know, and her niece, you know, get out of this freezing lake and then take care of them, make sure they're okay. That Jason and then our father uh, are there with the reverend to help fix the roof so that there can be a Christmas service that so many people pitch in to help their neighbor. I think that's that's what it's about. That's the spirit of Christmas more than the gifts or anything else. I think it's important for us all to carry that with us during this holiday season and, and those who are in need to be there for them and let others know that they are cared for, supported, and that how much of a difference we can make in other people's lives. So... I send you with that Christmas wish and all the best from my family, the Walton family, to your family. May you have a wonderful holiday season. I'll see you next time.